when you're using the float level senders, you have to parallel through a resistor into the aux line so that it gives it some voltage difference to read. And a lot of people don't under, understand how they can add all of those onto one line. So um, let's see if this works here. Um, we made a little video in, to uh, kind of explain it. Take the resistor and a pre-stripped portion of wire, wrap the tail of the resistor around the sheathing of the wire to hold the resistor in place, then pull it forward and tighten the wind around the pre-stripped area of the wire. Then take your soldering iron and solder Get a small amount of solder on the soldering iron. Heat the wire and resistor tail until the solder flows onto the wire. And then you're done. Trim off the excess tail with a small pair of side cutters. Unwind it to remove. And then cover with heat shrink. Step number one, take the 4.8 excitation wire, remove it from the connector, take an X-Acto knife with a relatively sharp blade, set it on the sheathing, press gently and roll the wire underneath the blade. This will cut the sheathing, but don't press so hard that it will actually cut the wire. Then about 3 eighths of an inch from that other one, do the same thing. Then take the X-Acto knife and very carefully strip the sheathing off of the area in between the two points that you made. And you're left with an opening in the wire sheathing. Then you take your pre-soldered resistor on the end of a wire, set the resistor next to the wire, put your hand, your fingers over top of the resistor itself, then take the pigtail of the resistor and just wind it around the open area that you've created in order to hold the resistor in place. Then take your soldering iron and solder Solder the joint together. Take a small pair of side cutters, remove the pigtail from the leftover area of the resistor. Add a small piece of heat shrink onto the wire to cover the resistor. piece of bead shrink to cover the joint and the resistor itself to give it extra stability. And there you have a completed resistor tree for the 4.8 excitation. In the case of we were talking about two float senders and a current sensor, you need to have the 4.8 coming through three different places. Two of them have to be coming through the resistor for the tanks, and then the other one is the pure 4.8 going to the current sensor. Um, and that gets you what you need to do. And you can add as many branches onto that 4.8 excitation line as you need to to go to the multiple sensors that you might have, be it uh, 
trim sensors, if you have a sport system or just the EIS, uh, trim sensors, the pressure sensors, uh, the fluid level sensors and things like that, up to six different aux functions, but you could have as many as seven different, um, you know, complete system, you could have up to seven different branches off of that 4.8 excitation. And you can do that, that branching thing that you saw there. You can do that as many times as you need to on the wire. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you're doing the, the two float senders, you would do that exact same process twice along that uh, 4.8 line. So you could end up with two resistors soldered onto it and still have the blue line coming off. I have three two fuel packs, one right wing, left wing, and center fuel. How do I do that? Same way. You can set up an aux function for left tank, right tank, and center tank. And what you do with those, if you have float senders for all of them, you just do that branch three times on there and then run each one of them to the aux line. Um, using the wiring for it, and then uh, you can display them as you know, box number one, two, and three. And I don't know how you want to lay them out left, right, center, or left, center, or right, whichever. On the EIS 4000, box number one, two, and three have their own page. So you might want to put it box number one, and then is uh, the left tank. Box number two would be the center, and box number three would be the right tank, so that on that page it's left, center, and right. And you can rename the aux functions on the EIS 4000 so that when you're looking at the EIS itself, instead of it saying AUX1, which is what the, the stock thing is, you can change the name so it says LF fuel or center fuel or, or you know, label it in some way that makes sense to you so you know what it is. Um, with, the, with the advent of the EFIS systems and uh, the larger screens and HXs that we've been using nowadays, uh, a lot of guys have gone to blind mounting the EISs because all of the information that comes into the EIS as the collection point for all those engine sensors and float sensors can be displayed and massaged on the EFISs. So you really don't need the EFIS, the EIS anymore except for the initial calibration and configuration of tack pulse rates and fuel flow numbers. All the rest of the information that comes off of there can be uh, calibrated and configured on the e um, The The one thing that a lot of people forget is that if you're using a fuel flow on the EIS and you're going to blind mount it and control the fuel totalizer function off of the EFIS, is that you have to physically set the fuel number to zero on the EIS. You can't let it run down to zero and then think that it'll work. You actually have to set it at about two and then set it to zero so that it'll actually read correctly. Then at that point, and I know Widget talked about this for some of you that were here yesterday, um, to set the fuel totalizer number on the EFIS, you go to the fuel page and set it to whatever you have amount-wise in the total of all your tanks. Um, any questions on the EIS stuff? Yeah. I have a quarter for a 912 and ended up with an 582. Okay. Same one? Um, well, which one do you have? Do you have a 2000 or uh, a two, uh, do you have a 2004 or a 4000? Probably 4000. Okay, if you got a 4000, it will work for a 582. You're going to have a lot of stuff on there that you're not going to be using with the 582 that you would have been with the 912 oil pressure, oil temperature, um, and two of the CHDs, two of the EGTs. It'll work with it just fine, uh, but if you wanted to switch it up with a 2000, um, you can do that. Just uh, give Nick a call at the shop next week and then he can talk to you about uh, swapping it out for the 2000, which is the one for the two strokes.